two inches. Uh, joining me right now with our state of San Diego is political analyst John Dadian from Dadian and Associates. John, good to have you on there, my man. Do I? Oh, there it is. Sorry about that, John. Good morning. Yeah, John. Let, let me tell you something. Monday mornings and button pushing doesn't they don't go together with me, there, my man. Too- too many moving parts for you, Chris. Yeah, it does. It is what happens here. Hey, John, maybe you can kind of help me uh, figure this out because this. There are speaking of moving parts, there are an awful lot of them when it comes to this uh, this uh, Azano scandal, uh, the Susumo Azano Mexican millionaire accused of uh, making the campaign uh, donations, uh, and now he has uh, he's spoken out and he says it wasn't me, it wasn't me. Help me make heads or tails of this. Well, there's a couple of interesting things. Uh, that most of this new statement that's coming out is from uh, court filings that have been recently uh, made public. Um, on one hand, now keep in mind what some of the issues that are at the crux of this is he is a citizen of a foreign country, and a citizen of a foreign country cannot contribute to a campaign in the United States. That's the basic law. Okay. But he's saying that his head of security – one of the main gentlemen at this uh, uh, controversy is the one who made this recommendation to him. You know, it's kind of, that's kind of a tough sale because ignorance of the law is no excuse. That is true. So, and not only that, but you've got Ernie Encinas, who is a, a former police detective. Here's a guy that ought to know something about the law, or at least where to find the uh, where to where to where to find the answers to the questions he might have about it. And uh, Azano says, "Well, Ernie Encinas told me it was okay." Yeah, that's basically it. But the, I think one of the most interesting parts that's coming out is it seems like uh, Azano and Encinas are both absolutely saying categorically the district attorney, you know, had no knowledge, nothing to do with this, et cetera. And I think that's the strongest thing that's bolstered the argument that she's been giving all along. So uh, the the DA, Bonnie Dumanis, has come under fire. There have been a lot of questions asked about this as these uh, campaign contributions came to uh, some of them anyway, the, the largest uh, portion came to her her political groups uh some directly to her campaign some to the 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 political committees that were supporting her campaign and like you said uh, just now john she's been denying that all along and it sounds like these guys are backing that up uh, absolutely that's so, so far based on the information they're backing that up so it's uh it's going to seem like she's going to be you know I hate to use the word exonerated because she never did anything wrong. Right. In the public eye, people had questions. I think this kind of uh, answers those questions and says that what she's been saying all along is correct. The other interesting thing on a recent published report in The Voice of San Diego is, is uh, among other uh, uh, point that Ozano saying that Antinus was the one that asked him to contribute money and, and recommend he contribute money, but he's also alleging that uh, Sempra Energy, because of dealings they had in Mexico and lawsuits that have been filed, etc., they're behind all this. And an interesting twist is Bob Brewer has been an attorney involved in that. And Brewer, of course, was against uh, Bonnie Dubana. So this this is better than any soap opera I've seen on TV lately. So this comes all the way back around and it may implicate the guy that was trying to, to push the notion that Bonnie Dumanis was was uh, guilty of something here. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, you know, uh, again, Ozano is asking the federal government to release a lot of information that he feels his defense attorneys has not gotten yet. If that happens, then maybe we'll have a clearer picture. And all of a sudden, Semper Energy enters into the fray in the conversation about all of this. Very interesting. Okay, John, uh, big news is one of the appellate courts on Friday rejected the the hotel surcharge that was set to pay a, a large portion of the convention center expansion. Where does that leave us? Um, not good. <laughs> not good at all. I, I started to say in limbo, but it's a, it's probably a little bit worse than that because um, now the city has to make a decision about whether or not to appeal. If they appeal, it would be to the state of, of uh, California State Supreme Court. The problem with that is two problems. Number one, the uh, state Supreme Court doesn't necessarily have to hear the appeal. And number two, um, some people are – I haven't done a thorough analysis of the actual opinion, but some people are saying that it was a pretty strong opinion by the appellate court, and so they don't think that it would be overturned by the state Supreme Court. So now, does this mean the expansion center is stuck where it is? Does this, uh, where does this put us? Are we going to see some of that, uh, that, that, that expansion that we've been talking about for years now? Well, no, I actually, no. It means that the $520 million expansion is stuck without any money right now um, because, again, the money that's been collected, 
their ruling that it was it was not proper to be collected. So the only alternative that I see would be possibly to go back to the ballot, do it the proper way, which would be a uh, a citywide vote, not just of the hotel owners. But of course, the problem with that is we're talking about you know a delay for quite a while. You know, to whatever yeah. ballot it could go on. And uh, so that's the problem. But for right now, that money uh, was not collected properly. So if the voters say, OK, it is all right to charge the hotel surcharge, does that all of a sudden free up all the money that's been collected thus far, which I now don't. seems to be in a weird account? Well, first of all, I don't believe so. Um, and again, we're waiting for an actual ruling on that, which okay. I haven't seen yet. However, another very important part is one of the reasons why they went this route and tried to have the hotel owners vote on it is because a vote of the public, because it's a tax, is a two-third vote. And that's, uh, you know, we've seen it that we've there have been su- some successes, but it is rare. And it's certainly at a minimum hard to do. Yeah. Two-thirds to approve a tax. And that's what would be needed. And San Diegans, I think there's, there's a lot of priorities out there. And that's a reason why two thirds is always difficult. Yeah, that's an uphill battle. All right. The state of San Diego, every Monday morning at 620 with political analyst John Dadian from Dadian and Associates. John, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for the insight, because these are two, uh, two big ones here for the city of San Diego. Appreciate your time, John. Be careful of those man. buttons. <laughs> I'm going to push one right now.